We think of armies as strong, mighty, powerful, intimidating. Well, here's a twist you won't be expecting unless you read the name of the video, not all armies are strong. Some of them are very, very weak. These are the weakest armies in the world. Number 15, Costa Rica. Considering just how generally dangerous South and Central America can be, it may seem like a curious anomaly to find that Costa Rica is actually pretty peaceful. According to many experts, this is all thanks to the country's decision to not have a military. But actually, Costa Rica does have an army, it's just pretty weak. In the 1980s, Costa Rica created the Special Intervention Unit, also known as the UEI. Officials insist that this is a police unit, not a military group, though the missions they undertake certainly sound slightly above the level of ordinary police work. These 70 soldiers, yep, just 70, are tasked with everything from intercepting traffickers, rescuing hostages, and just generally performing counter-terrorism work, making them about as close to an army as you can get without actually, you know, invading another country. Still, this small group of soldiers receives the same training received by the US commando teams, making them undeniably an army. Still, there's no denying that Costa Rica has blossomed without a military presence. So maybe there's something in this whole make love not war business. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14, Laos. In Laos, the armed forces are known by a pretty creative name, the Lao People's Armed Forces. But what they may lack in a unique and game-changing name, they definitely don't make up for in terms of scale. At least, not compared to some of the more militarized countries on Earth. But then, who can compete with them? The Lao People's Armed Forces are significantly smaller than others worldwide, with their army having around 29,000 active duty soldiers, Their marine section claims around 600 personnel with 16 patrol craft, and the Air Force, with 3,500 personnel, once had 24 combat aircraft. Now they have zero. And while many rich Western countries are willing to fork over billions of dollars and vast amounts of their GDP in the name of defense, Laos attributes only 18.5 million on average, around 0.5% of their total GDP. Clearly, Laos doesn't consider their armed forces to be quite as essential as some other countries seem to think. Although I would still think twice before trying to mess with any military, and that includes the Laotian people. People. Number 13, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Generally, you'd expect that having two armies would make you one of the strongest militaries in the world, but that isn't true for Bosnia and Herzegovina. As it turns out, these two armies turn out to be one of the world's weaker forces. Quite an accomplishment. The armed forces of Bosnia and Herzegovina were officially unified in 2005 to become the official military force of Bosnia and Herzegovina. This military comprises two founding armies, the Bosniak Croat Army of the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Bosnian Serbs Army of Republika Srpska. These military forces' total budget is around 165 million, which sounds like a lot, but don't be fooled. In actuality, this comprises just 0.6% of the country's entire GDP, which is next to nothing compared to other countries of the world, which is next to nothing compared to other countries in the world. So yes, Bosnia and Herzegovina's two armies actually don't make them any stronger than any other country. Considering the intense war in the region back in the 1990s, it's kinda crazy that the governments spend so little on defense. Or maybe it's just crazy that other governments spend so much on it. Who's to say? Until Elmo makes an official statement, I will wait. Number 12, El Salvador. Ah, uh, the armed forces of El Salvador. The official military forces of El Salvador. 
Sure, these soldiers may not be part of the strongest army in the world, but in their defense, this army's history has long been motivated by the soldiers' needs for money as opposed to their desire for... War? Back in the 19th century, the government of El Salvador would have hired soldiers to make up its army. However, if those soldiers were not paid their rightful wage, they would up and leave, taking another job as mercenaries and militia for local politicians or landowners. This is how it went for pretty much all of the 19th century through to the early 20th century. Nowadays, the Salvadorian armed forces tend to commit to the cause and stick with it, regardless of conditions. According to 2017 statistics, the army comprises around 47,000 active personnel, apparently none of whom are actively working as a private militia for landowners. The El Salvadorian military has seen much action throughout its existence, from quashing rebellions to intervening in global wars. But still, this army is not necessarily equipped as strongly as certain Western countries. But hey, they have the option to become private mercenaries for politicians, so I guess it's the same thing. Number 11. Madagascar Despite being a relatively small country, Madagascar is no stranger to armies. While its army may also be relatively small, the Madagascar People's Armed Forces are certainly big enough to make an impact on the world stage. I mean, it's not an army of Smurfs. The Madagascar People's Armed Forces comprises three units, the Intervention Force, Development Force, and Aeronaval Force. While those names may suggest some kind of intimidating super army, the military actually only has around 13,500 active personnel, making for what must be one of the world's smallest armies. However, at the beginning of the 20th century, the Madagascan military was much beefier, with over 46,000 soldiers being drafted to join the fight in World War II. During that conflict, Madagascan soldiers valiantly fought in France, Morocco, and Syria alongside the French, who at the time still had control of the colony of Madagascar. While it's far from the smallest or weakest army in the world, the Madagascan army isn't too far off. Thanks to their relatively small country and the lack of ongoing major world wars, Madagascar can get away with maintaining a small army. But again, they're not Smurfs, they're normal-sized soldiers, I swear. Number 10. Panama Get a load of this. Panama is one of a handful of countries in the world that has no military presence. That's absolutely true. While it may seem kinda nuts to have no military in this uncertain world, Panama has decided to forge the way and show other countries that you can survive without bombs. In 1989, President George H. W. Bush ordered an invasion of Panama, intending to overthrow the military dictatorship that had ruled the country since 1968. When the US actually managed to achieve that unlikely goal, the Panamanian military was officially abolished, making this country the second in Latin America to permanently abolish its army. But don't go assuming that Panama is some kind of lawless, crime-ridden tax haven. It is that, but they have police, some errant maritime forces, so that'll show those pesky criminals, that'll teach them not to commit crimes on the, um, high seas? Hmm. That needs a little bit of work. Since 2008, the Panamanian security forces have seen significant reforms that have changed the face of their once violently aggressive military. However, it's pretty common knowledge that Panama is far from the safest place on the planet for curious tourists, so that's probably something they should work on. Number 9. Namibia when Southwest Africa gained independence from South Africa in 1990, it brought with it sweeping changes in the region. One of the most significant developments was that Namibia finally gained itself a military, the Namibian Defense Force, or NDF. If you want another confusing acronym for your collection, the NDF was initially created by combining various military forces used in the old South African regime, though it truly came into its own when the British agreed to help train the NDF. The United Nations also joined to help train this new force in Africa, and 30 years later, this army is still going strong. Sure, it may only have around 15,000 active personnel, but the country puts a lot of
of money into protecting the country from outside threats, some $7.2 billion, or 4.6% of Namibia's GDP. It's fair to say they take their defense measures pretty damn seriously. Chances are you never really expected the Namibian Defense Force to be a force to be reckoned with, sure. It may not be the strongest army in the world, but it turns out that this army is pretty well equipped to take on any potential threats to its local interests. Especially given their western allies, you don't want to start anything with Namibia, unless you have a big ol' army. Number 8. Gabon Gabon is another country that you could easily mistake for being some kind of underarmed weakling. Sure, they don't have a big army, actually it's surprisingly tiny, but these soldiers aren't trained for anything other than defense purposes, and that means defending everyone, but mostly one guy. The armed forces of Gabon is divided into the army, air force, navy, and a national gendarmerie, all combining to make up around 5,000 active personnel. That's a a truly tiny army. And it's almost impossible to imagine how the heck an army that size could hope to protect their country from potential invaders. But for the most part, this defense military has done a pretty great job of protecting the country from troublemakers. Although we should add that they tried to stage a coup against Gabon's sitting president in 2019, so make that what you will. While the army may be pretty small, we should also add that these armed forces also contain a 1,800-member guard designed to protect Gabon's president. This may explain how he survived an attempted coup by his own military. It's that or just pure luck, I can't say. Number 7. North Macedonia like many smaller countries, North Macedonia has adopted a small military approach to its nation's defense strategy. And by small military, I do mean spending their millions of defense funding as opposed to billions. Because yes, that counts as small in this context. Doesn't that make you feel extra broke? The Army of the Republic of North Macedonia consists of an army and an air force, which comprise of a combined 8,000 active personnel and an additional 5,000 reserve personnel. This is kinda crazy when you think about it. A total of 13,000 soldiers in total to protect a country of over 2 million. And sure, it may not be the strongest army in Europe, let alone the world, but it seems to get the job done relatively well. The country provides around $108 million every year. around 1% of its total GDP. On an unrelated note, you probably shouldn't look at your bank account right now. It'll only depress you. The Army of the Republic of North Macedonia is small, that's… that's for sure. With only 13,000 soldiers in total, it's unlikely to make any serious moves on the world stage. However, it seems to keep the company pretty safe, and what more could you possibly want? Parades. Number 6. Somalia the story of the Somali Armed Forces is probably one of the most unusual in all of our list, as it once wasn't weak at all. In fact, this army was probably one of, if not the strongest army in all of Africa at one time. Today, however, not so much. During Somalia's post-independence period, the Somali Armed Forces quickly grew to be recognized as one of Africa's strongest and largest militaries. However, a series of unfortunate decisions and circumstances led to the military complete collapse, practically disintegrating by the 1990s. It wasn't until the year 2000 that the Somali armed forces began truly rebuilding their military forces. Although it's significantly smaller than it once was, today the Somali armed forces comprise just 21,000 active personnel serving in either the army, navy, or air force. For comparison, the military once reached numbers of around 123,000 active personnel. Seriously, at one time, the Somali armed forces were a true force to be reckoned with. But the poor decisions of its leader and a whole host of unfortunate external conditions quickly put an end to that. Today, I guess they have to just accept their place as one of the weaker armies in the world. Sucks to be them. Number 5. Dominican Republic 
In what may be kind of an ironic twist, over 60% of the military forces in the Dominican Republic are utilized mostly for non-military purposes. I mean, at least they're using their soldiers for something, I guess. Better than retraining them to be bakers until war breaks out, the armed forces of the Dominican Republic comprises around 89,897 active duty military personnel serving in the Army, Air Force, or Navy. However, as we mentioned, over 60% of that active duty personnel are used mostly to provide security for government-owned facilities, forestry workers, and personal security for local politicians. The armed force's primary duty is to defend the nation and protect its territorial integrity which they must do with 338 million, or 0.62% of the country's total GDP. Easy task or challenging mountain to climb, you tell me. Seriously, somebody tell me, I don't know what it means. The armed forces of the Dominican Republic would almost definitely be a force to be reckoned with if not for the fact that most of their manpower is spent on non-military activity. Since they're kinda mostly used as bodyguards and private security, the actual army part of their job is just destined to be kind of weaker. But I bet they'd be terrific security for a parade of some kind. Number 4. Central African Republic Despite getting more of a percentage of the country's GDP than some other armies in the world, the Central African Armed Forces are, what's the polite way to say it, practically pointless in every way. With just 7,150 active duty personnel, the Central African Armed Forces are already a relatively understaffed and weak army. But they're also an unpredictable and disunified bunch. While they had previously shown some disloyalty to the president, it wasn't until the outbreak of civil war in 2012 that this military became truly dysfunctional. Despite the government's continued efforts to form some kind of coherent and united army, the active duty soldiers have continually rebelled, making the whole thing ultimately kind of pointless. That, coupled with their never-ending breaking on human rights violations, make them not only one of the weakest, but one of the most dangerous armies in the world. Despite all of this, the government continues to funnel $32.5 million into the defense budget every single year. The Central African Armed Forces, meanwhile, have since taken to burning down the homes of many residents, leaving upwards of 20,000 residents homeless. Maybe they should put a portion of that $32 million into rehousing them. Number 3. Mauritania the armed forces of Mauritania receives a larger percentage of its country's GDP than many others on our list. 5.5% to be specific, or 37 million. However, that number isn't all that impressive when you take a look at the military as a whole, because, surprise surprise, they're kind of a weak army. The armed forces of Mauritania comprise around 15,870 active duty personnel, serving in the army, navy and air force, and an additional 5,000 paramilitaries. Considering that hefty GDP percentage, that's not a whole lot of soldiers and probably not a whole lot of resources, meaning they're probably not so well equipped to take on massive, well-funded militaries from more affluent or powerful countries in the world. They also have something of a history of staging elaborate coups against sitting presidents. So I guess they're only a weak army outside of their country. The armed forces of Mauritania may not be one of the most intimidating armies in the world, but they've pulled off several coups in their own country, so they probably shouldn't be underestimated, although I think any and all presidents of Mauritania have probably figured that out by now. Number 2. Suriname for those among us who aren't familiar with international geography, Suriname is likely only known as a single typo when we clumsily try to type surname. But when we're talking about weak armies, this one absolutely has to be on the list. After the creation of the Statute of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, Suriname's protection became the duty of the Royal Netherlands Army. In turn, they helped to launch the Surinamese Armed Forces, a three-branched military designed to help protect the country that is still ongoing today. However, the military is unthinkably small, composed of only 2,500 individuals. That makes this army one of the weakest in the world. 
and would likely be unable to hold its own against potential invasions from bigger or more prepared militaries. However, the United States has been providing military officials training to promote good values and a stronger understanding of how a military functions in a civilian government. In the past decade, the Surinamese armed forces have taken steps to acquire more advanced military equipment from countries like China and Brazil in the hopes of becoming a more capable military. Although if they pulled off a coup, they could probably do anything. Number 1. Vatican City Yes, for those who somehow don't know this fact, Vatican City is indeed a country. The world's smallest country, in fact, and despite being home to one of the world's most high-profile and important people, its army is… what's… what's the word? Uh, divinely small. Vatican City is home to just 825 people. Let that sink in for a second. There are cruise ships out there with more people on it than the whole of Vatican City. Of those 825 people, 135 are recognized as members of the Pontifical Swiss Guard. This army, founded in 1506 to protect the Pope, is the world's smallest military, despite having 16% of the population serving. And while they're known to be highly skilled in the fields of military service, they likely wouldn't be able to take on another army. And let's be honest, the likelihood of the Pope declaring war is pretty low. It took him forever to get to Twitter. The Vatican City Army is by far the world's smallest military, but it's pretty impressive when you consider that its whole purpose is to defend and protect one man. Even David Hasselhoff didn't have that in his prime. Which of these weak armies do you think is the strongest? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!